Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, welcome back to this new course on psychology of language. This is uh, my fourth course on NPTEL MOOCs. Prior to this I have had courses on uh, cognitive psychology, consumer behavior and uh, on human behavior or introduction to psychology. So I decided to start a course on the psychology of language. The question is why did I think of a course on language or the psychology of language. One basic difference between us humans and animals is the fact that we can communicate with each other. We can talk to each other and we can express our ideas in ways which are far behind, far ahead of what animals can comprehend. We can pass messages between us, we can think and we can comprehend things talk among each other and generate ideas and do a lot of other uh, functions which animals cannot. One primary reason that animals are not capable of doing these things of generating good ideas, coming up with new patterns, evolving in the, uh, in the, in the chain of life is because they do not have a effective medium of communication. Having said that, it is not that animals do not communicate to each other. They do, but the way they express each other, they talk to each other, they pass messages among each other is a primitive form of language. So, at the very outset of this course, let me give an explanation of what is the difference between communication and language. So, communication is a way of expressing ideas or sharing ideas between groups of people using basic symbols which convey limited information. Most of these communication are non-structured and only a few bits of information can be passed on from one person to another. Also communication cannot be productive in the sense that messages which are passed through communication are very limited in scope. In contrast, Language is a form of communication where messages are passed between people and these messages can be productive, can lead to newer ideas, can lead to newer understandings and it can mean a number of things. The same message can mean a number of things, can transfer a number of ideas and it can generate a, the same 26 letters in English, can generate a whole lot of information which is what was between people. And so I thought that if language is at the so essence, at the so basic of the distinguishing between us humans and non-humans which are animals, why not take a course, do a course on the psychology of language. So here I am with this course on the psychology of language. What we will do in this uh, course is we will look at how communication language is different, how language developed and what are the full uh, various rules of language, how these rules are used by people in communicating, uh, communicating ideas, what are the foundations of a language and several other uh, features of language. For example, how is speech produced, how is speech perceived, how are letters written, what are words, how are they expressed and so a number of things that we are going to study in this course. Now, since this is the very first lecture, what I will be doing is, I will be starting off by defining what is uh, animal communication, how animals communicate and how this communication, what is the need of this communication and how they are different from 
the language that humans use. What is the primary differences between them? So, what I will do is I will uh, try and <coughs> bring together these two features and do a uh, uh, comparison among these. So, as I explained communication is a way of expressing ideas between group of uh, people, animals or whatever they are. So, it uh, is a way of expressing ideas or, or uh, spreading ideas. Animals have a very basic way of doing this. It could be in terms of bird songs which are calls by birds which mean very specific things. Animal communication could also be the wiggle dance of a honey bee which we will discuss further. It could be the squeaking of a crow, the strange sound which squirrels make to alert other squirrels in, in the herd, the moos and the barks that are done by certain animals and communication is just not only limited to animals, humans also or earlier humans also used to form or used to use some form of communication. For example, the smoke signals which are used for communicating certain kind of uh, information relating to predators are a form of uh, communication. And so, prehistoric humans also used to use communication. So, language basically is a medium of communication which is a very recent development. So, over the years, the science which studies the psychology of language is called psycholinguistics and that is what we will be focusing on in this course. So, basically let us start discussing on what is animal communication and so I have here at the very outset a few outlines of what is that you are going to learn from this part of the lecture. So, after studying this section or this lecture anybody who is interested in studying language should be able to discuss or should be able to know the four main purposes of animal communication system. Why do animals communicate? So, they will be able to pinpoint this particular fact. Other than that, they will be able to describe well studied animal communication systems such as the honey bee wangle and the were wet monkey alarm calls. So, they will be able to distinguish these communication systems the two different communication systems that we are going to take explicitly in this lecture is the honey bee wangle which is the honey bee dance as it is called and the alarm calls which certain kind of monkeys in Africa do and these calls are basically to warn other people to warn other members of the herd of certain predator calls certain predator arrival or dangers that can come from environment. Another thing that you are going to learn after re, uh, reading this section is discuss the ways in which many species use vocalizations to maintain social structure. So, you will also understand how communication is used by certain animals or certain species of animals as a vocalizations as a way of maintaining social structure. One good example is cows if you look at them they move and this moving actually makes the herd makes them come in a herd or sheep which actually have a certain kind of a sound which makes them come in a herd and certain moings also uh, tell about the hierarchical structure which is there in the herd. And at the end of it you will all be also be able to explain the four key characteristics of animal communication system. So, what are the major parameters what are the major characteristics of animal communication system. So, basically then ethologists are the people who are given this chance or who are responsible for studying animal behavior. Now, as I said if we want to study human language or, or the psychology of human language we have to first start focusing on non-human languages basic languages of animals because that will give us the fuel the basis on which modern day language was created and how modern uh, languages progress or they work. So, uh, eth ethologists are the people who actually study 
animal behavior and animal communication systems and they point out that the communication system in animals is intended to influence other organisms. So, basically the animal communications are ways are, are certain behaviors that people uh, that animals do to influence other animals or other member of that particular group. It is also related to the conspecific members of the same species are also influenced by these uh, communications. So, these ethologists they give the reasons or they point out that there are basically four factors why animals use communication. So, four basic reasons which most ethologists suggest that animal use communication are for finding food for finding an enemy or foe, for finding a friend or for finding a mate. So, four different things or four different reasons, facts, factors why animals use communication system or animals use communication. So, what is communication then? Let us first describe what communication is. Communication is described as any behavior on the part of an organism which is intent, intended to influence the emotional thoughts or behavior of other organisms. What this says is that if we want to influence or if we want to change thought patterns, behaviors, emotional vocalizations or other factors of other organisms, we should use communication and so communication is the way how you want to change or how you desire to change other people or other members of a particular group that you belong to or maybe other group, how you want to change these features of these people. So, basically it is it's a medium of exchange of ideas, it is a medium of uh, flow of information between two members or many members. Now, this communication which is a behavior which is defined as a behavior which a member of a group does to influence the behavior pattern, the thoughts, the emotion of other members of the same group can be of four different types. So, as I said communication is a behavior. Now, what are the forms of this behavior? In what ways this behavior are acted up? And so, there are various forms. It could be a vocal behavior in terms of the moves, the barks, the dogs do, the mooing that the cats, uh, that the cows do and several other vocalizations, the bird song vocalization and so on and so forth. So, it could be vocal in nature, this behavior. This behavior can also be facial in nature. So, certain type of communications are facial in nature. Just by looking at certain facial or facial activities, members, other members of the group can understand or can decipher what a particular member of a group is feeling or what a particular member of a group is, uh, is expressing. Generally nonverbal behaviors are expressed in this way. So, whether somebody is angry, somebody is sad or in, in terms of animals uh, uh, by, by looking at the face of another animal, uh, the kind of twitches that it does can communicate certain kind of uh, information to other members of the group. Communication behavior or the behavior that we call communication can also be in terms of body posture. So, certain kind of body postures by one member of a group can express certain uh, information, can express certain kind of or can elicit certain kind of behaviors on other member of the group. So, uh, one behavior or one kind of behavior through which communications can be passed on is the body posture. And finally, we have odors also. So, odor movements or smell can also be one way of communication. So, you have seen dogs urinating and so on, on tires, on, on car tires and so this is one way of communicating. So, it is not a random thing, they basically pass along the message that they have been moving through this place or they have been wasting this place. And so, odors are also a kind of behavior that animals do for passing out communication or for sharing communication, passing messages among other member of 
that particular species. Now, let us start looking at the four F's or the four primary reasons why animals communicate. And so, the first one is called food. Now, Austrian ethologist Karl von Frisch 1967 was one of the first group of scientists who first described the honeybee wangle dance with a communication about resources. And so, Karl Frisch was one of those leading scientists who actually described that food could be one of the reason or food is one of the reason why animals communicate. And what Karl uh, Frisch described in detail or the, the medium that he used to describe, the model that he used to describe that food is the reason why I mean animal communicate is the honeybee bengal. Now, what he said is that honeybees they systematically change location of nectar sources. So, within within the, the, the honeybees the sources of nectar are not constant they keep on changing as flowers keep on changing as as there are different uh, regions in, in, in the field and so there will be different regions where there will be nectars and so the honeybees actually have to find where the nectar is and so these nectar sources with seasons or with periods of time with changes in the environment they keep on changing systematically. What he found out is that if a honeybee there is there is in, in the honeybee honeycomb or uh, the place where hon uh, honeybees live there is something called the queen bee. The queen bee does not do anything she is only responsible for reproducing. The other bees are actually responsible for collecting the honey. So, the way that these honeybees or one of these honeybees when, when she gets to know a nectar source how does she communicate this information to other bees of the honeycomb that is what has been described by Carl von Frisch and he believes that this kind of communication was or this kind of communication this kind of behavior that they do is the that is the honeybee wangle that they do is because they want to communicate to other members of the uh, honeycomb that this is where the source of the nectar is. So, suppose a honeybee goes to a particular region and she finds nectar, how will she communicate this to other members of the group? And what Carl Frisch found out is that there is a particular kind of dance that this honeybee who have actually found nectar, she does to communicate the location, the source of this particular nectar. So, where is it this source, where this source actually lies, the direction, the angle and the exact source to relay this information. This honeybee who has found the source of the nectar, she produces a kind of a dance and this dance is called the wangle dance. Now, the dance which is performed on vertical surface of the honeycombs, it reveals two things. One is the direction, angle from vertical indicates the angle from the sun. So, the kind of direction that she is going on to and the other is called the distance, the length of the wangle correlate with distance from the hive. So, generally the wangle dance, the dancing that the honeybees actually do is that they will wangle dance, they will first wangle, twist their bodies, run, turn to the right to circle back to the start and then they will do again a wangle run, turn to the left and particularly going back to again the same starting point. Now, this kind of movement that they do, this kind of 8 movement that they do uh, is actually indicating where or which side from the honeycomb they are going to find the other honey uh, bees are going to find the source of the nectar. The direction of the wangle, the dance to vertical axis, the axis on which the, uh, the honey bee is wangling provides direction to where the source of the nectar is. Example, for example, straight up is towards the sun. So, if the honey bee is dancing at an angle of straight up, it is towards the sun that the source of the nectar is and likewise for any angle subtending with respect to the vertical axis. So, if the honey bee is dancing and she moves straight up, then the direction of the nectar is towards straight up or any angle to the vertical axis in relation to the straight up to the perpendicular to the vertical axis is will give you the direction of 
where this particular nectar source is. Another interesting thing from this dance is the length of the vagal that they do. How far from the center of the dancing point, from the center of the start point is the honeybee actually dancing. The more the length, the greater the distance of the nectar is. Let us have a look at it. And so, this particular uh, uh, diagram is adapted from David Luden's book, which I have been using for uh, making these lectures. And as you can see, this is the vagal dance that we have. So, uh, as you see, it starts moving in a particular vagal. The way, the height that it is making to this particular angle, this particular angle, because this is my perpendicular, this is 90 degrees, this is my vertical axis and the angle that it is making to the vertical axis and in this case, this is my vertical axis, the angle that it is making to the vertical axis will tell you at what angle the source of the nectar is. Also, the distance that this dance is will tell you the direction. So, direction and distance are two things that this honeybee Wangle will actually represent. And so, this is one interesting thing to look at and this proves that communication or primitive language as I would call it is done by animals or non-humans. I would not call them animals, I will call them non-humans to communicate ideas or to communicate information about food. So, one reason is for food and this kind of dance is basically or this kind of uh, behavior suggests that honeybee angles are done for food. The second primary reason why animals communicate or the reasons for animal communication is letting other people of the group know of a predator, of a foe, of a predator. And so, within this category, what one comes to know is alarm calls, which animals like squirrels do. You have uh, seen a squirrel and uh, Alvin the chipmunk and that kind of movies and you see that that particular squeaking noise the squirrel that makes and this noise is exactly, there are different kind of noises which are there. Some of these noises are to warn other squirrels of a foe which is coming, of a predator which is coming. And so, what these alarm calls actually do is they warn conspecifics about approaching predators. Conspecifics are people of the same species. So, these calls, these squirrels quicklings actually tell other squirrels that a predator, maybe a snake, maybe some other predator is approaching and what they should do. So, squirrel chattering is an alarm uh, call and it is used to warn members of group about approaching predators. Another interesting study or model system which has been used to look at the reason for animal, animal communications are where weight monkeys and so vervet monkeys like this, <coughs> uh, they how to interact with the offsprings and what are the kind of vocalizations that they have and what do they mean was also studied. And it was found that vervet monkeys have three types of alarm calls. One is the eagle ca alarm call and this eagle alarm call actually warned the other members or senior members of, of the group that a eagle is coming. What do eagles actually do? Eagles take away the smaller offsprings and so this call is made to warn of an eagle. So, so uh, in, in terms of squirrel, they have just one or two types of vocalizations. In terms of the vervet monkey, there are four, three or four kind of uh, vocalizations and one kind of vocalization is very specific to the eagle and this is to warn the senior members of the group that an eagle is there and what this eagle is going to do is take away the uh, offspring. They also have something called a leopard call. Now, the leopard is known to attack the vervet monkeys and so this kind of call is made to make other members of the conspecifics of that particular species that a leopard is at loose and this leopard may, might attack them and eat them up. And so, that, that is one of the reason or one of the kind of calls that the vervet monkeys have been done. There is a third type of call or there is a third type of action vocalization and that is to aware of other conspecific members of the species that a snake is there and what is the snake going to do? The snake is going to bite them and they will die. And so, there are three different call of or three different types of cause that is there. Now, there is a lot of research which has been done 
and by varying the different calls and producing artificial calls and seeing how animals actually understand or where wait monkeys actually understand these calls and how do they respond to it. One another reason of animal communication has been in terms of finding friends, finding your place in society. So, animals also communicate to find friends. Dominance of hierarchy is one type of animal communication system or animal communication output I would say. So, social systems in which each member knows who ranks above and who ranks below is also expressed by certain kind of calls and basically the cattle they express a variety of emotional states through vocalization. So, this kind of mooing that cows do or cattle do is basically these mooing actually tell or these mooing actually express the kind of hierarchies that different cattle have or different breeds of cattle have or different uh, kind of uh, members of that particular cattle uh, have within the structure. Also certain kind of vocalizations in cattle are done to express mother infant bonding. For example, rat pups they emit ultrasound when they fall from the nest and these ultrasound or this, this vocalizations actually tell the mother cat or the parent uh, uh, rat that the pup has fallen from the nest and they should be taken back or they should be cared about. Also humans uh, infants cry out for their mothers and this kind of crying that human infants do actually warn the mother of a state. Now, if you have seen small babies they cannot talk. So, if they have stomach ache or if they have certain kind of problems they cannot talk and it is their cry that they do the different kind of crying that they do which gives us some hint or maybe pediatric doctors to what is actually happening. So, whether he is crying out of some pain or it is stomach ache or so on and so forth. And so, th this kind of things also happen in humans, it is basically expressing the kind of discomfort that they are doing. The laughter, the crying, all these kinds of things are certain kind of communication. Also social grooming is expressed through animal communication. <coughs> For example, picking fleas and dirt from fur of corn specifics is one way of making social bonding. So, you would have seen uh, bears and certain kind of animals where they pick out fleas from uh, the skin of other animals and this is a kind of a social grooming, it is basically making friend and that kind of act, that kind of behavior is actually communicating that I am your friend. It is also used for building friendships and it is a form of communication because it influences others behavior. So, without saying anything just the act of doing this make these animals come together or come near each other and act as friends. And so, one way of expressing or one reason of expressing communication or using communication in animals is finding friends, either finding social grooming or finding uh, dominance in hierarchy or a vocalization in um, as, as a infant mother bonding. So, come and uh, animals and humans they communicate or animals generally communicate for also finding friends. And the fourth find, uh, type of communication or fourth reason of communicating is finding a mate and that is the most necessary thing in animals, getting your genes into the next generation. So, males advertise, males communication for a mate is done in specific ways. So, males advertise their genetic prowess to attract mates, for example, peacock feathers. If you look at peacocks, they are males, they have these feathers and the dance that they do, the kind of act that they do is basically for attracting females so that they can reproduce. Peahens do not have feathers, pe uh, peacocks do have feathers and peacocks are actually males. So, basically the kind of dance that they do, peacock dance that they do with the feathers is basically attracting mate. Similarly, bull frog croaking. The croaking of the bullfrog you would have seen um, uh, or you would have heard bullfrog croaking on a rainy day and that is because attracting females is the reason for that kind of a communication. Bird songs, you have heard bird songs, singing birds, different kind of birds singing and so the reason for these bird songs is attracting females. So, hearing these bird songs, hearing this cry, the wails of birds um, is, is basically for attracting the member of another spe uh, other um, gender to to, uh, re, to reproduce to uh, bring up the newer generation. Similarly, firefly lights 
the lights on, on a firefly are basically a medium of communicating uh, to a mate of the other uh, gender and to reproduce. So, it is not only males, these are these these four were on uh, these four types of communications were through males, but it is not only that males communicate uh, for uh, reproduction, the other uh, thing is that females also uh, produce certain kind of communication systems or have certain communication systems which attract males for uh, reproduction and one is the mating ritual. So, there are certain kind of mating rituals you have in dogs in certain kind of other animals and similarly uh, the pheromone, pheromones uh, which are sensed uh, through, uh, through certain molecules the bodily molecules are also used by females for example, female dogs or certain kind of uh, the, the monkey and this kind of uh, pheromones are produced by females to attract males so that a reproduction can be generated. So, basically then this animal communication system that we have been discussing is basically for four different factors that is what uh, mostly ethologists believe and these four factors are for either finding a uh, friend or either for finding food or finding a predator, uh, warning people of predators or finding a mate. And so, basic reasons of this animal communication has been outlined in this way. So, then having said that or having give, given you an explanation of what are the various forms or what are the various reasons of uh, animal communication system is, can we then find out the general features of any communication system or animal communication systems. So, the very primitive communication system. Looking at various animal communication systems, some basic features or some basic characteristics of such communication system exist. The very first is called limited range of expression. If you look at vervet monkeys, they communicate about three different predators and nothing else. right? So, the expression that these animals can do the kind of information that they can express through their, their, their uh, behaviors which is called communication is very limited in nature. And if uh, going back to the idea of what vervet monkeys do or squirrels do is that since vervet monkeys have been uh, studied in detail, so we are taking that example and it is found that they have only three calls either it could be eagle call, it could be a, 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 a predator call. Uh, of, of a lion or it could be a snake call and these are the three communications or these are the three behaviors that they can do and they cannot express more than that. So, basically most communication systems in animals are limited by the range of expression that they can do. Another interesting feature of animal communication systems are that they are holophrasics. The utterances of their uh, 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 the utterances that these animals produce are holophrasic in nature. What does it mean? Vocalizations or gestures, they refer to entire situation not specific objects or events. So, basically if you look at the waggle uh, dance in honeybees, they can tell you about the entire situation where you are going to find something, you are going to find some kind of source right that the, uh, the dance will tell you where is the source and how, how um, the, which direction it is and uh, what is the distance. But it is not going to tell you that if you go to the source whether you are going to find honey or you are going to find water or you are going to find something else. So, it will not tell you the specifics of what is going to what you are going to find there or what kind of flower it is there, what kind of nectar is going to come out of it, those things are not there if you look at the vagal dance. And so, holophrasics are vocalizations which refers to the whole situations and not the specific. So, they can give this communication systems, animal communication systems tell you about a situation in total and not the specifics of the situation of what, why, where, how those kind of features are not present in uh, animal communication systems and that is why they are holophrasic in nature. So, two uh, basic general features of animal communication system is limited range of expressions, only limited features can be expressed and holophrasic as the whole situations can be expressed and not the specifics. Another interesting feature of animal communication system is little ability to combine symbols to express novel ideas. So, novel ideas or new ideas or combining different symbols to form a new symbol that is not possible with animal system. B dance they combine direction and distance information, but nothing other than that as we have looked at that only specific information can be given to you only um, the 
some information can be given to you not all kind of informations. So, these symbols that, that are there that animal communication systems are there they can be read as it is they cannot mean something else. As with human language the words which are being expressed and the meaning of the word are different. For example, the same word dog, inu, hun, kutta all of them mean the same four legged animal, but they are different different words. And so, different different words mean the, make the same meaning. So, different symbols, different letters make the same meaning at the meaning level, although letters are different. That is not possible with animal communication system. Also, most animal communication systems are about here and now. They express situations that is happening here, that is happening right here and right now. So, when they express an idea, it is about the present situation. Animal communication systems are never going to tell you what happened yesterday or what will happen tomorrow or those kind of things. It will never predict about futures. It is just in the moment kind of a thing. It will tell you what is happening right now, what is going to happen right now that kind of a thing and they are able to communicate here now situations. For example, if there is a leopard call by the varvet monkeys, it will tell you that the leopard is here right now or the snake is here right now. It will not tell you that a leopard has come here yesterday or will come here tomorrow or what to do with it when he comes tomorrow that kind of information is not passed on. And so, the four different things or four different general features of any animal communication system is the limited range of expression that they can do, the utterances are about the whole situation and not specific parts of a situation, they lack the ability to combine the symbols to give novel ideas or newer ideas and they are always about the present situation and do not give you any idea about what will happen before and after a particular point of a situation. This is about animal communication systems, but for us humans things are a lot different than what animal systems are all about. We are different, humans can produce language, can communicate in various languages and this gives them the ability, the freedom to do a lot of things, to express ideas, to come up with newer thoughts, to come up with newer meanings, to generate uh, so many uh, 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 thinking patterns, thoughts, ideas through certain or which are generated uh, or which are passed on through certain symbols and these symbols are arbitrary in nature. So, human beings can communicate among each other and they can communicate not only about um, certain things, they can communicate about specific ideas, they can communicate ideas within ideas and that kind of a thing is there. So, let us then look at in this section after learning about human language, what would you be able to do. So, after studying this section, most people who is taking this course should be able to discuss the three important features that distinguishes language from other communication system. So, how language is distinct from other communication system that is the first thing that you will be able to do when you read this particular section. Also, you will be ex able to explain the duality of patterning which gives languages expressive power. Duality of patterning is a feature which most modern languages use and this gives us, uh, this gives any language its expressive power, the power of it to express various ideas, novel ideas, create new ideas and so on and so forth. One should also be able to describe the basic level of linguistic structures from phonemes to discourse if you are able to clear this section or able to read this section and once you are able to do this section, once you are able to read this section, you should be also be able to explain how displacement differentiates language from one uh, other communication system from other other communication system. So, let us start by look uh, this section by first looking at some of the basic important forms of human language. So, for humans language is replaced by vocalizations. In humans, language replaces the vocalization that we see in uh, animals. Now, we communicate with language, but when emotional language shuts, uh, emotional language shuts down with emotional thoughts, language shuts down and animal vocalizations and face expression persist. So, although we use language 
and we are advanced by animals in this particular feature. When an emotional situation comes in, when a certain emotional expression is there, the language ability shuts down and so what happens then is that we use basic primitive forms of animal vocalization and face expression to generate emotion. So, emotion basically is a form of communication system is very akin or close to the animal communication system. Language provides emotion or provides emotion a particular base to express itself. Now, one basic form of language that humans use is laughter. It is a laughter is basically a social vocalization which we share with chimpanzees. We use it together with conversation to enhance social um, uh, uh, interactions. So, language is, is, is a form of social vocalization that actually humans use and language um, is, is something which helps us to enhance the kind of conversation that we do. Now, when we are talking to someone and we laugh with at that person or we laugh in response to certain acts of that person, it is not that something funny has been conveyed. People laugh because they like that person and they want more of that person, they want that person to speak more and that is what they laugh and so laughter is a way of communicating. So, laughter basically has evolved from labored breathing of rough and tumble play, it is come from this kind of a thing. Now, it means playful intent in both chimpanzees and, and humans. So, what is the meaning of laughter as we discussed before, laughter actually means a playful intent. It does not really mean that we, we are laughing at certain information that the other person is providing, it is an intent it is an intent of interest between people and chimpanzees and as typical features of a communication system. So, one of the basic features or one of the basic facts, social facts or social uh, acts that humans have is laughter and this is a form of communication system or this is a one of the form of communication system. Laughter and language, so how they are connected? It involves the same vocal apparatus, cannot do both at the same time. So, language and laughter, they use the same kind of localization, same kind of vocalization, but both of them cannot be at the same time. So, when you are laughing, language cannot come in, when you are producing a language, a laughter cannot come in because they are using the same verbal apparatus. Alternate between laughter and language in conversation and that is why we alternate between laughter and language in a particular conversation. So, basically then laughter actually encourages a conversation, right. Laughter the way we laugh, the reason why we laugh in a in a in a in a in, in uh, one to one interaction or many to one interaction is because it encourages uh, uh, certain conversations. Also, as we have discussed before, laughter and language, these are the same vocal apparatus. Language communicates most of the content in an interaction. Laughter is just a, is, is a, just a process of, uh, it is just a way of vocalization, but most information in, 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 in any, any language is communicated through language and laughter signals interest in continuing through the interaction. So, in when, when in a conversation you are laughing and, and you are speaking, the language is communicating most of the information in that particular conversation and laughter is what it is doing is, is it is signaling the interest of continuing the interaction. Another interesting uh, fact of language or another interesting form of language is speech. Now, there are different modes of human language. Speech mostly resemble vocalized communication system. The way we speak, the way our uh, uh, vocal cords vibrate and produce speech is there are diff, uh, is, is it uh, resembles a vocalized communication system. Also, writing has taken, uh, taken on its own form of conversation. So, basically then, then various modes of human language or various ways in which we can communicate or human languages, one is speech which is a vocalized communication, the other is writing as it is uh, it is also a, mo a mode of communication between people or mode of uh, passing ideas between people. The third form of language or the third form of communication in humans is the sign language. So, with animals the, the form of communication is very limited, but with, any, uh, with uh, humans this is way far advanced and we have many ways of communication. So, speech is just one way of communication among people, speech is one form of language, another form of language is writing and a third form of language is also sign language uh, which are full fledged language independent of the spoken languages. So, in sign language all information is communicated 
uh, in uh, various forms of information is communicated same signs and symbols mixed together to uh, to give newer forms of information and they are communicated without using the spoken language so sign language is a form of communication that that is used by humans where information is passed to members to conspecifics of the same species uh, but they don't require any spoken language the primacy of speech virtually all languages use it in a spoken mode so basically all languages use the spoken mode of uh, although uh, written language and spoken languages are there but mostly most forms of animals and humans they use the spoken form of language now there are three important features of any language and these important features are what distinguishes human language from animal language so we should be concentrating as we saw that the animal languages or animal communication systems have four different features which are there similarly human languages are three interesting features or three features which distinguishes it from any other communication systems which exist out there first human language it follows certain rules what are those components are combined according to certain rules so uh, and these these rules are called the uh, the grammar so the grammar actually tells you what kind of information or what is the way in which various parts of a communication or spoken uh, sp whether it is spoken written or sign language how they should be combined together and these components then when they combine together to give meaning so if a language doesn't follow rule it will not generate any meaning it will not mean anything so rules are very important for any language and so most in uh, la human languages have certain rules and why these rules are necessary these rules are necessary because if you follow these rules uh, then and only then it will produce any kind of meaning any kind of communication of ideas any kind of better better communication of ideas also languages human languages have a structure so not only they follow rules which says that how components are combined they also have structures which says that components are combined within a particular structure and this is called the syntax the way communication the way certain components of the the language how they combine together in which format they they combine and this basic formats of combination actually tells you what it is going to convey or uh, what a particular uh, language is going to convey the third form of any animal a human language is that they are use something called arbitrary symbols words are symbols bearing no resemblance to what they actually refer to so when we look at human languages there are certain words that we use but the idea is that these words actually do not uh, point to what the meaning of a language is or what the meaning can be derived from the language for example let's look at the arbitrariness of the word so if i write dog gao inu hun if you look at them all of them have different words and different combinations right and so these words are arbitrary in nature because all of them this is english this is chinese this is japanese and this is german and no matter what you do no matter what these words tell you they actually point to a concept of a four legged animal which is a pet and which we keep in our house and they bark and so all of them actually refer to the dog so different languages have different symbols different words which are combined together to give a different um, uh, a different vocalization but these vocalizations ultimately combine together to form the meaning the meaning for all four languages whether it is chinese japanese um, uh, german or english all four they use different different arbitrary symbols but they combine together to give rise to one meaning which is a dog and the dog is the same for all four languages now animal communication systems may have some but not all of these characteristics so animal communication systems actually uh, borrow some of these information from the human language they borrow some of maybe uh, is the structure or arbitrary symbols uh, for example some arbitrary symbols which are used by animals uh, and animal uh, communication system is they have iconic symbols certain kind of iconic symbols are used uh, and these iconic symbols are arbitrary in nature but they are expressed by or they are read by the conspecifics so animal communication systems they have some but not all of these characteristics that the human language has 
Also the human language is conveyed in three different modes. One is the vocal mode which is the spoken language as I said human languages can be conveyed in three forms. One is uh, the vocal mode which is the spoken language that we have, the manual mode which is the sign language that we have. You can often see in the American sign language which is used or in sometimes in Dudashan you would see uh, a sign language uh, news which are used for dumb and deaf people and they can they do communicate everything, every idea which is out there um, which uh, the, the actor wants to convey to uh, people who are listening to it but then it does not have any spoken language and then there is a visual form of uh, communication or visual, visual language in, in humans and that is called writing. So, writing, speaking and sign languages are three modes of communicating or three modes of language that humans have. Then we also have human languages also have something called duality of patterning and what is duality of patterning? Duality patterning gives language is expressive powers. The expressive powers that language have, the way it expresses, the kind of expression that it does uh, is what is duality of patterning. It is a process that takes units at a lower level and combines them according to rules into new units at a higher level. So, duality of patterning uh, says that basic level sounds or basic level um, uh, components or basic level units are taken together and they are combined to uh, uh, combined to give higher level units. Now, the, there is no relation between basic level units and the higher level units because higher level units when, when basic level units combine together to they give a different kind of a or, or, or altogether different kind of a expression altogether different kind of a meaning which is there. And how is this com combination done? So, uh, they combine the basic level units into higher level units according to rules into new units at a higher level. By repeating this process many times a multi layered structure of great complexity can be built out of small set of simple n events. Look at the human language, basic speech sounds are combined together to form words which then form combined together to form sentences which then combine together to form meanings of sentences. Right? So, you have uh, there are 40 phonemes, there are basically 40 speech sounds out there and these 40 speech sounds then combine together to form the 26 letters of the alphabet which then combine together to form multiple multitudes of words which then combine together to form a sentence and the same letters 26 letters and the same 40 phonemes can mean everything in this world can mean whatever you want to read in this particular world. So, structuring process, so duality of patterning then is basically a structuring process that takes units at a lower level, combine them according to rules to form a new unit of higher language, right. So, basic duality of patterning is and, and why duality of patterning? Because the lower level, the speech sound that that is that combines to form the, the word and then the word that they combine to form the sentence, they have no relation to each other. It, it, these words will never predict what the, so speech sounds will never predict what the word means and the words will never predict what the sentence means and the sentence will never predict what the meaning of the whole uh, structure or the whole paragraph is and so that is how the duality of patterning is. Now, small set of simple elements such as speech sounds can be combined to form complex structures. Given language virtually limit, given uh, uh, languages, this particular duality of pa patterning gives the language virtually limitless ex uh, uh, expressibility and a whole set of expression or a whole set of uh, uh, the words and ideas can be actually expressed through it. Now, the building blocks of languages are phonemes. The first step or the first form or the first structure of any language is called the phoneme which is a meaningless speech sound. The ba, ma, pa sound these are the basic sounds which are there and they form the, um, the these are speech sounds which form the these are meaningless speech sounds which form the first level of any language. Phonemes they combine to form morphemes. So, these phonemes these speech sounds they combine to form uh, uh, very small words for example, ing for example, ly. So, uh, kind, kindly 
uh, or noun ending for example, uh, uh, run running. So, these are this uh, morphemes are combining this form, uh, phonemes to uh, form very simple words which have no true meaning as such. So, phonemes combine to form morphemes which are the basic units of meaning and then morphemes combine to form words. Now, these morphemes they combine to form the whole words and the words combine to form phrases. So, these words then combine to form certain phrases, phrases are actually sentences or parts of sentences which have uh, which are not complete, but they can stand on their own and phrases combines to form sentences and sentences form to form uh, discourse. So, sentences actually lead to discourse and these sentences are formed of something called um, words and uh, phrases and these phrases are combination of words and the uh, words are combination of morphemes and the morphemes come from phonemes. So, that is how the uh, the whole idea of language comes in or the whole idea of this the way human language is defined. Now, what I have done today, we will look at the pyramidal structure, uh, the pyramidal structure of how language uh, is organized in the next class and so since this is the very first class, so let us do a, a quick recap of what we have been doing up till now. What I did in this class is that I tried to introduce you to the psychology of language and I gave you enough reasons of why we should be studying psychology of language, what is the need of studying language at all. Now, study of language is required because it, it this is the only way we can understand how people communicate. Now, whether you are an uh, artificial intelligence uh, scientist or whether you are one of those people who are designing computer programs which can read, you need to understand how languages are structured, how languages operate and how do they communicate ideas. And so, the understanding of how human languages or animal languages uh, work will give you an idea of designing intelligent systems which can understand people. The Google um, translator that you use, the Google assistant that you use, these are modern, these are forms of, these are developments in human languages and they came, came by because machines are now able to understand human languages. With humans, if two humans are communicating, they can understand the language and they can understand the reason behind the language, but machines will not be able, never be able to feel the emotion behind any language. So, machines will be able to carry out order, but they will never able to uh, feel the emotion behind the language. And so, that is the psychology of language or that is the reason why you should be able to or why you should be coming to this course and studying uh, the psychology of language. So, we started off by looking at what is the difference between communication and language and we focused on what is communication and what are the characteristics of communication. Then we started off by looking at basic communication systems which are animal communication systems and we looked at why do animals need these communication systems and we found out it is for food, it is for uh, uh, predators uh, alerting somebody of predators or it is for finding a mate and these are the reasons why um, animals actually need a communication system and then we looked at the characteristics of such a communication system. We then moved on to study what is human language and we started looking at what are the basic formats of human language and so we looked at uh, vocalizations of speech, we looked at uh, laughter as a, a medium of uh, human language and that is that's where we uh, dealt with these are the primitive forms or these are the basic forms of language which I have been using. Then we do uh, discuss some of the characteristics of human language and what these characteristics actually mean and from there on we started looking at the structure of language. We also looked at something called duality of patterning which basically says how language, what are the features of language or how this arbitrariness of symbols of a language, how they combine together basic level units into higher level units which do not actually interact in reality, but then they form the basis of meaning of any word or phones or um, any expression which the basic unit is actually giving you. So, what we did in this class is we started off by explaining to you why we should be studying language and some basic reasons or some basic uh, primitive forms of language and how these primitive forms of language combine together to form the actual language system. Next time when we meet, I will be explaining to you how the pyramidical structure of language exists and how human languages function, how human languages are built, how do they function and what is its role in evolution and what is its role in expressing ideas and so the course will progress in that particular manner. So, for now from here it is goodbye, thank you.